we will call the December 5th, 2023 Ormond Beach City Commission meeting to order. It's exactly 7 p.m. and uh, kind of hate to interrupt all the good conversations and discussions that are going on, but uh, we do have a little bit of business to get to, there, get to this evening. I hope you felt welcomed as you came in by our Leisure Services Director, Robert Carolyn, and Airport Manager, Stephen Licklider, who both served as our greeters tonight. Uh, if you need a card for any of the items on or not on the agenda, please fill one out. See uh, Taylor and she'll assist you. And with that, I'll introduce the rest of the folks who are sitting up in front of you tonight. It's our recording secretary, uh, Taylor Lockhart. And training with her tonight is Ashley Clements. Oh. Ashley will be filling in for us next meeting for Taylor. And then we have city clerk, Susan Dodderus. Our Zone 1 Commissioner, Lori Tolland. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Our Zone 2 Commissioner, Travis Sargent. Good evening, everyone. To my left and your right, our City Commissioner from Zone 3, Susan Persis. Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. Our Deputy Mayor and Zone 4 Commissioner, Harold Briley. Good evening, everyone. City Manager, Joyce Shanahan. Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. And Deputy City Attorney Anne Margaret Emery with us tonight in Randy's place. And then way to my left and way to your right is uh, Captain Roos filling in for Police Chief Jesse Godfrey. And I think it's Fire Chief Bailey over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fire Chief Howard Bailey. Uh, for those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington. At this time, if you would, please silence your cell phones and uh, we will have the invocation given by Pastor Cord Bear from Tomoka Christian Church, if you'll rise for that, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Father, your word's uh, pretty specific when it comes to government and your role in appointing those who rule over us. So we're grateful for your guidance and direction in that. Lord, I pray for these elected officials um, who serve uh, this community. Uh, my prayer, Father, is for your wisdom and your uh, hand to guide them in their decision-making. And ultimately, Lord, we are grateful for this season, as it was mentioned, a season where we reflect on your love for us and the gift of your Son. And it's his name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Audience remarks uh, will start tonight with Elaine Davis. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Elaine Davis. I live at 76 Melrose Avenue, and I'm here tonight to ask for your help. Uh, we have been trying for three years to get some speed humps put on our block of Melrose, and that has not happened yet. Um, we have eight small children on our block, and we have a visually impaired young man who walks with a service dog just on our block. And the speeding of the cars has gotten crazy. There are two speed humps up the other end of Melrose, which I think almost annoy the people driving so that when they hit the stop sign at Ridgewood, they take off. And the same thing coming off of Beach Street. Um, and we've been here before and we've talked about that. Um, we spoke with Sean. We had a meeting. The residents came together and they finally decided to proceed forward with it. And your process is to send a letter out to the residents to ask yes or no, do they want it? And your process also says it has to be 65% of your residents. So the letters went out and I wasn't really happy about the way they were sent out because they weren't addressed to the homeowners. They were just sent to resident. So I know for a fact that a couple of them got thrown in the trash as junk mail. So we didn't get a vote either way on those. We ended up with 14 yes votes and three no votes. One I count in there as the 14th to a gentleman who didn't even get a letter to be able to respond. So. We were supposed to have 14 solid votes, but then when I came down here to review the file, there were three other residents added to our 21 on Melrose. 
because they have driveway accesses to Melrose. So it changed our number to 16 votes. <laughs> so that being said, um, we believe, and there are the 14 of us are on this letter that I gave you tonight, we believe that the 65% should come from the existing votes that we get in. So we got 17 votes in. It should have only been 11 that we needed to get it approved. Anybody who doesn't respond, it's an automatic no vote. And it shouldn't be. It should just not count for anything. But we're asking for you guys to get involved and try to help us get these speed humps put on the street. We need two of them, one at each end. Um, and if not, what can you do to help us? We, we need to do something to control that traffic and the speed. So we appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is Fran Canfield. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as I begin, let me assure you that my head is on and clearly attached. Just as the citizens of Ormond Beach came together, to make their opposition against the Belvedere project and continue to do so, they are coming together once again to be proactive in their opposition to any future development relative to the Ormond Beach Airport. This letter, there is a letter uh, that I can provide to the board dated August 12, 2022. The letter clearly defines the scheduled tasks for a runway extension which were not met, a significant which were not met, therefore the grant money was withdrawn. Trees were and continue to be a significant concern impacting the approach and departure of aircraft at the airport. Several trees are off airport property. There are several neighboring resident owned properties that were in fact learned leaned on with intimidation of an easement needed for RPZ and the taking of property in order to take the trees. An AGIS is still required, which is Airports Geographic Information Systems, to evaluate the obstacles. Bottom line is the trees surrounding the airport on and off airport property are an integral part to be considered. Currently, the issue of tree obstructions affecting the approaches and departure surfaces need to be addressed. FAA has advised no further funding will be considered at this airport until the AGIS has been completed. There are volumes of documented information relative to the above. To ignore and consider future development at this airport, in part for the benefit of larger limited aircraft, and business owners. The city has a problem with the airport. Compounding the problem would be the inclusion of the fuel tank project and any rezoning, whether or not a pilot is training or helicopter pilots training or private planes coming and going, increasingly, I might add, at a very low altitudes at this airport. The increased landing and takeoffs remain a safety concern. The noise pollution together with environmental pollutants are other factors. We need to save the trees. In good conscience and in consideration of all, we should support, why should support be given for any further airport runway development when it is questionable as to the benefits to the community? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca. Mangoli. Hi. Um, I just, I wasn't going to um, say anything. Our Ormond Beach meet. What? Oh, Becky. I'm not on you yet. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. It's Rebecca Mangoli or Mangali. Oh. Too many Rebecca's around here. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm just here to remind you and everyone here that the fight against the fuel farm is not over. 
this moratorium that the county has enforced for nine months, it's not a permanent solution. And I hope that you guys, as well as the community, is not blindsided by this. Uh, it's just delaying the inevitable. So I'm hoping that the city will continue to work diligently because it just seems that we've gotten a little bit further with you guys than we have with the county, and I appreciate that. So just a reminder, it's not over. Keep fighting. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Commission, we are on approval of minutes. These are the minutes from the special city commission meeting of October 25th, 2023, and from the regular city commission meeting on November 7th, 2023. They've been sent to the commission for review. Also posted to the city's website. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Mr. Mayor, approval. Second. Second. Uh, two, two motions and two seconds. I'll let Susan score that however she wants to. And uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Thank you. Uh, those will be shown passing unanimously. And we are uh, now going to adjourn the city commission meeting. The following items are community redevelopment items. The city commission in Ormond Beach serves as the community redevelopment agency of the city and must review these items <laughs> and make a recommendation as the CRA to ourselves as the commission. Therefore, we will recess the city commission meeting and call the CRA meeting to order. And uh, as chairman of the CRA, I will open the public hearings and ask our secretary to read 6A, please. Resolution number 2023-203, a resolution of the city commission individually enacting as the community redevelopment agency for the central business district and adjacent areas, authorizing the execution of an annual service agreement for the Ormond Beach Main Street between the city agency and Ormond Beach Main Street Inc. for the promotion of economic, physical, and aesthetic redevelopment and maintenance of the Ormond Beach Main Street District and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-203, read by title only. Thank you. And now, Becky Parker, <laughs> Executive Director, Ormond Main Street. Thank you. Um, our, as, as you can read, the, our, our service agreement is on the consent agenda tonight. And I was thinking earlier today, I have been um, with Norman Main Street for nine years. Um, I just finished my first year as executive director, and I probably would not have taken on that role without the support of Steven Spraker and Joy Shanahan and um, Brian Rademacher and even Lori. And I, I just, I say that because there are 57 other Main Street programs in the state of Florida, and I don't know a single one of them that has that type of relationship with their city. Um, we have something really special here, and I just appreciate it so much. I think we are on the cusp of some really big things. Um, and I, I want to point out our new associate director, Chris Wells, and just our, our board members, Nancy, Tom, Judy, and Sam. And um, yeah, it wouldn't be possible without them. So appreciate it, and thank you for including us. Thank you. Thanks for all you do and your volunteers. We appreciate you. Uh, commission, that was the only card I had. I don't know if there's any other discussion. I move approval of resolution number 2023-203. Second. Moved and seconded that we recommend approval to the city commission. All those in favor, unless there's any other discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign and we'll show that recommendation passing unanimously. I'll close the public hearings. We'll reconvene the city commission meeting and move to the consent agenda. Uh, the action proposed is stated for each item on the consent agenda. Unless a commissioner removes an item from the consent agenda, no discussion on individual items will occur and a single motion will approve all items. Does any member of the commission wish to pull any of the consent agenda items? Commissioner Sargent. I'd like to pull D, G, H, and P, please. Anyone else? I was going to pull G and H, so yep, we're good. Just need a motion to approve. Move absent. approval of the consent agenda absent D, G, H, and P. Second. Second. Seconded. Please call the vote. 
Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7D. 7D. Resolution number 2023-207. A resolution accepting the proposal of Relation Insurance Services of Florida, Inc. regarding Workers' Compensation Claims Administration and Medical Management Services, authorizing the execution of an agreement and payment, therefore, rejecting all other proposals and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-207, read by title only. All right. Mr. Mayor, move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Commissioner Sargent. Thank you. Um, just have a couple quick questions. Um, as I've reviewed this, there's on their list of providers, there's a lot of providers in areas outside of Mormon Beach, Volusia County. And I was just curious, are we referring our um, employees that might have a workers comp claim you know to Orlando or St. Augustine or um, outside I'm just curious on that only if we have to okay. there are some there are some specialties that we can't find doctors within Ormond Beach or even Volusia County okay so in those cases we might have to refer them to Orlando or Jacksonville okay and the, the last, just uh, kind of a comment, I think for the insurance requirement, the city should look at requiring, um, especially this item, for them to carry cyber liability. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Please call the vote on 7D. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7G. Resolution number 2023-181, a resolution accepting a proposal from Paul Culver Construction, Inc. for construction management services regarding the Bailey River roof replacement project authorizing the execution of a work authorization and payment therefore and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-181 read by title only. Thank you. Just need a motion and a second. Move so approval. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, Commissioner Sargent. I probably could have just made these comments without pulling it but just curious, how did we get the estimate from AAT roof in in the first place and why did they not bid on this project? Alex Shimon, City Engineer. Uh, AAT Roofing is one of our uh, contract providers. Um, that's how we got the roof estimate in the first place. Um, we reached out to them specifically as this was being bid at the first time, um, and they did not wish to put in a bid. Okay, it's just interesting that they can quote us and give us a great estimate, but they don't want to follow through with that estimate. Um, I'm thankful that the commission rejected the first when this we put it out for bid and we only received the loan the loan bid of $157,000 which was what 200% more than the estimate we received from someone that didn't even bid on it. Um, just the breakdown though um, now it's going to cost us 70,000 almost 71,000 after insurance reimbursement FEMA state funding the cost to the residents is only going to be 2200 uh, dollars. So, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? Yes. Commissioner Persis. No, I just wanted to thank Commissioner Sargent for bringing that to our attention. You saved the city a lot of money with, with uh, your comments last time, so I appreciate that very I much. I was pleased to see that, and, and speaking with Joyce, that it's going to be the Cedar Shake Shingles, which is historically correct for that building and, and, and the cost difference. Uh, Commissioner Sargent, that was a good call. Thank you. All right. No other comments? Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7-H. Disposition item titled Intent of RFQ Professional Services for EOC and Public Safety Complex Space Need Analysis. Just need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Commissioner Sargent. Oh, okay, I do have one card. Uh, 
actually two cards. Yep. Jeff Boyle followed by Connie Colby. Jeff Boyle, 614 North Halifax Drive. This consent item is a $200,000 first step in relocating the police station. Identified as a top priority in your January goal setting. It's not a priority for most of the general public who knows very little about it. It's a $50 million decision and we had little or no public input into it. Uh, the staff report lists some very thin reasons for the relocation. First, uh, we want to get the closer to the city's geographic location or center, wherever that is. Well, currently, it's in the center of our population, which is, I think, more important. Uh, secondly, we want a, a site less susceptible to severe weather event. Uh, no documentation of this, no history, no science. Third, increased staffing needs for population growth over two decades. Well, the city has said time and again, we've had minimal population growth over 20 years, about half percent a year. So it's hard to understand that rationale. Uh, we want to improve public safety. That's hard to quantify in an era when the police station is locked during non-business hours of operation. Uh, officers in cars with computers, radios, and county dispatch calls operate a lot differently. And lastly, the need for a new emergency command center. 20 years ago, we spent $100,000 retro retrofitting an RV, uh, which I believe uh, to, as a mobile command center. And I believe it never left the garage, and we have no idea today what its fate was. Former Commissioner Selby answering a direct question on the radio, probably gave the most likely reason for the relocation when he said the property is prime commercial development. And uh, the problem with this is traffic. Um, near the most dangerous uh, intersection in our city, US 1 in Granada. And the police station generates no traffic. Last spring, the Florida legislature denied the request for funding to help with this relocation. This is a costly proposal based on questionable reasoning. Please table the relocation, revisit it at next month's goal setting, or consider retrofitting the existing property and facility. There's plenty of room out back for additional construction. The City Commission has had a great year with great leadership on a number of tough issues. Please give this massive expenditure one more look. Thank you. Thank you. Connie Colby. Good evening, Connie Colby, 108 Robo Lane, Ormond Beach. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank whoever is doing the agenda now. It was much better written, more information on the front page. I appreciated that. Um, for the second time in two months, the plans for relocation of the only 22-year-old police station is on the agenda as a resolution. The use of over $2 million for just design and permitting without any input from the public as to how they view the safety needs is premature. Prior to designing and permitting, I suggest that the department records be reviewed as to where most of the activity is prevalent in the city. What is in the agenda today lists meetings with the public as task number five after the fact. After all decisions are made as to where, the magnitude of the project, etc., the public will be asked which of the already chosen designs they want, not if they want any at all. Reasons listed now as, and in the past have been that it's in a flood zone, which FEMA says is not true. The EOC would need to be moved in case of Category 3 hurricane. Um, last I heard, read that the EOC was moved in Category 3 around the corner on Nova Road which is just right there. And we really haven't had Category 3 hurricanes. And we've survived some pretty big storms in the past 22 years. Um, they need more room. Um, most of the calls go through the county these days and re relay to vehicles that are on the road. Hardly anyone is in the station, which is locked at night. More space would be available if you moved the, 
code enforcement office out of the police station. Most of the time I've come for code enforcement. When I first came, <laughs> I found out that it was not at City Hall, which where I would expect it to be. Um, code enforcement shouldn't be that busy anymore after the new law where you don't have any anonymous reporting, and I see violations all over Ormond Beach these days. <coughs> Our building should last more than 20 years. This one is substantial and is located in the part of Ormond Beach with the greatest density. Um, have you checked where most of the callouts are? Responses from the current station have easy access to Beachside, West Granada, and US 1. New stations out by 95 leave limited Beachside's presence, and they already have no medical services. It appears that the suggestions to move the, su the station are out by 95. If they, there doesn't seem to be a lot of police activity out that way, maybe substations either north or south past 95 might be a solution. Um, as far as the training facilities, there's a nice one over at Daytona Beach. Maybe you could work something out with them because that one doesn't seem to get a lot of use. Um, there was a, okay. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. 7-H, <coughs> Commissioner Sargent, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 20 years ago, I'm just curious, how many police officers or staff did we have working in the police department? I'm sorry, I should have asked this ahead of time, but I just, okay. Okay, I'm just, I'm very troubled spending $200,000 for this analysis. Um, a bid for consideration for a space needs analysis. We're estimating it, it could cost $200,000. We don't, that's just to send this out to bid. Thanks for the clarification, I understand that, but I just, you know, we did a needs analysis for 56 North Beach Street. I think we paid $60,000 and that ended up getting tabled and um, weren't ready to move on that. And I think we just need some clarification. I'm not, I'll just be, um, very clear, I am not for moving the police department from the current location. Um, I, I would be uh, in favor of if we need to build an EOC, if the needs are there, possibly to do it maybe at the Ormond Airport. We own land there, probably be a lot less expensive. We could also put in a training facility for the, if we need to do an officer course like Daytona or whatever um, the police department need, needs are, I, I'm willing to do whatever they need. Um, this was the one item that the governor did not fund last year. Um, do we know why he didn't fund it? So I just, um, I don't see the need to spend and, and looking to, at the future, 50 plus million dollars. Um, I just, this is a step towards that 50 million. I'm, I'm just, I'm not there, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a comment. Commissioner Tall. So I'm not 100% comfortable that whether we need it or not, I think a needs analysis may be um, warranted at some point. But I think given some of the comments tonight and with Commissioner Sargent's feelings about it, I don't think it is imperative that we make a decision tonight and that we maybe readdress this when we do our um, um, setting our priorities when we do that, I think January, which is another month away. So maybe it would just be prudent for us just to hold on, you know, table it for a month and then relook at it. I'm not sure if this was, um, my gut is that we're gonna need a needs analysis, but why rush something if we're not 100% on board with it? And um, the other comment is I'm really not sure if this was a priority of this commission or previous commissions in what our obligation is to follow through. So I'm just, that's my thoughts. Thank you. Commissioner Persis and then Deputy Mayor Briley. Um, Mr. Finley, do you have that information? Was it this commission or the previous commission? It, it, it was, it was um, identified in the, um, the, Priority session that we did last January 2023. 
Okay. Yes. So, yes, yeah. it was. I it thought, was a yeah, I thought it was. And, and, then then it was, and then further further justification for doing it at this time was that we it was included in this year's capital improvement plan right. to do to do this level of Included study. in the what? The capital, in capital improvement gotcha. plan. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to say I don't mind waiting till January, but I do think we need to make a decision right. then by then, you know, what we're going to do because it, it is a it is something I think we really need to seriously look at. I mean, I I see I can see some pros and cons, but we have to look to the future, you know, in, in 10, 20 years, what do we want to have? And so those that's what I'm I'm thinking about, but I'm certainly willing to wait till January to bring this back up. That's three. Uh, Deputy Mayor Briley Mr. and then uh, City Manager Shanahan. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm willing to, to hold off on hold off on this as well until January. But uh, I think one thing we have to be mindful is our, our police station is not 20 years old. That police station has been there over 50 years, and it was remodeled 20 years ago. I remember that police station being operable back when I was in elementary school at Orange Beach Elementary School because we watched the cars go in and out. There's also a fire station there at one time. Fire Station 93 was there. It is in a low area. I've never seen it flood, so I don't know that it would flood. But this whole discussion at one time was for an EOC slash police station combination, if that's the way my memory serves me correctly. And currently, if you look at our city, especially at public works, now that area is low and floods all the time, or at least the street out front does. So we need an area where we can stage not only our public safety folks, but our public works folks in the event of a storm. We haven't had a direct hit from a Category 3, but we've felt the effects of a Category 3. And we're not here to say that it could. It, 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 it probably, it's not an issue of if it'll happen, it's an issue of when it will happen. Because at some point we're going to get probably a pretty devastating storm. It may be. 20 years down the road, but it could happen. So while I'm in favor of, you know, tabling this and discussing it later, I do think that, you know, again, that police station is a very old police station. It was redone 20, 25 years ago. I remember when the, the, the rehab occurred. Uh, but let, uh, from, from everything I can tell, they're still even at this point kind of busting at the seams. So we need to take a serious look at it. Thank you. Thank you. City Manager Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've heard a couple of times tonight that you're expecting a goal setting session in January. We set those goals every two years. It is not a every year um, item. Through your capital plan, you help us prioritize which projects you want to move forward based on your strategic uh, planning session. You know, staff is happy to, to workshop this item with you or, or bring you some additional information. But this is a fundamental first step in any kind of uh, building like this. When you're doing a, a police station, an EOC, um, we have experts that come in and they inventory the current assets that we have. They talk to um, the officers and find out what the needs are and how those spaces are being used. And then from there, they help us decide what it is that we need for our particular our particular needs. So uh, it's a very specific process, unique primarily to police and fire and, and hospitals and those types of buildings. Other buildings, not so much. You don't do that because you have a general idea of what need is. But um, we do not have a goal setting session plan for January. Good deal. Any other questions for Sean? Sean, thank you. Um, I'll weigh in. I, it sounds like I'm in the minority. I would vote in favor of this. I don't like the fact of how our employees have to work during emergency situations, police, fire, and public works. Uh, I've heard the stories of how they sleep multiple people in small rooms on top of each other, essentially uh, having to listen to each other snore, and uh, as well as being close to the other areas where people are up and working. Uh, when they get a chance to get those breaks, they don't get to take them. There's no proper facilities for feeding. Our current EOC is, is very small. And uh, so, you know, and I, I see the jam situation at the police department. They're very crammed and that bothers me as well. But if everybody feels like there's no problems and everything's great, then 
we don't need to uh, request a study to do anything different. I just feel like our employees deserve better. Our police, our fire, and public works folks really deserve to have the best that we can give them. And uh, But if everybody thinks the current status quo is fine, then that's where we're at, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No. I just want to say, I don't, I don't think it's satisfactory no. at all. I, I, I don't feel like that at all. I, I would be more in favor of just trying to get a really low price I don't you know we I know there's a line item in our budget for this and, and that's great but I think we're all trying to you know trim as much as we can when where we can um, but no I don't think it's it's a great place for them at all I think we I'm, I'm more in favor of getting one but just want to make sure that we use the money wisely to do the study and that was somewhat what I was trying to is just take a breath back and just step back and 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 understand exactly what we are analyzing and I'm sorry I did forget that we only do it every other year I'm still new to this whole process so I apologize on that um, eventually we're going to needs need a needs analysis and I was just trying to take a step back and kind of reevaluate where we're at with it and if I might mr. mayor um, we feel one of the reasons why we didn't any, get any grant funding is because we did not have a space needs analysis. So, Understood. because they, the, the legislature likes to see that you've got some skin in the game, that you're planning what your needs are, and you're moving ahead with that. So, and I think um, this would also be subject to the CCNA requirements, the Competitive Negotiation that, Act. For that, that's what I'd like to add is, you know, when, when you when you hire an engineer, when you hire an architect, when you hire a consultant like that. You have to follow those CCNA rules. And that means that you have to make a selection based upon their qualifications, not on the price. You know, the the $200,000 that's in there right now is an estimate. We're looking at other ones that have been done throughout the state of Florida. We haven't done one of these. And so we're, we're, we're shooting a little bit in the dark using the, using some of those. We obviously, we're, hope, we're gonna work on negotiating a, a, a price, a fee that, that is well underneath that. Um, we don't wanna come to you with any surprises either. So uh, I think that it, it's, not, it's gonna be on the magnitude of that $200,000. But we, we will get the best best qualified consultant if we if we move forward to do the job. The way we've structured this this con, this this RFQ as well is to follow kind of the, a, a format that we're familiar with with the I ninety five US one interchange, where a, a consultant was selected to do the planning portion of it. That gives us an option would give us an option to go direct use that same consultant for the for the construction plans to move forward. That way we don't have to go forward. We don't have to risk risk having a, a consultant that doesn't do the, do a good job for us we want to keep a consistent um, consultant throughout so that's why we've structured this one and hopefully um, it's a good format I believe it's it's one we've seen other people utilize I think that if, if, if we go forward at this time I think we have a good chance of getting a good consultant out there um, we're looking for someone to help us at this stage when we, we did a previous study like this where we used a local consultant who did, did a good job but what we're focusing on this one is someone who has direct experience with public safety facilities. I think that having someone like that will, will give us the, not only our best idea of what we need, what it's gonna cost us to do, and will help us to prepare for that day when, when we do get some funding. I have one more question. Um, so it would be a breakdown of, let's just say the um, EOC separate uh, uh, EOC police station slash fire station, you know, whole thing, or would it also be evaluating moving the police station if that, so is it like separate studies or? It, it, it's one study that's going to, that's going to take a look in, at those different considerations. All of our needs. All of our needs in, in, in one. Right. Um, EOC and police are the number one, one there. Fire administration is another thing that we've looked at. Um, a, a training course for like they have at EVOC right. for in, in, okay. at, at on the sheriff's department that can be utilized not only by the police but by the fire by public works so we can get some CDA CDL trained mm -hmm. truck drivers out there we, we want to look for something that that, that that utilizes and helps all of our departments okay thank you Commissioner Persis and then Deputy Mayor Brown. Um, Ms. Shanahan could you repeat what you said about the reason we didn't get any funding is because we didn't what was that have most of the time they want us to have some skin in the game to show that we've done a study or we have design work or something like that and then you're more apt to get funding we got a lot of money last year and it might be just that we got 
nine million dollars and that was a lot of money they just started allocating to other people so mm -hmm. but they do like to see studies um, they like you to have design design work before you move ahead those types of things they don't no. No, and I, I was just going to say, when we are in D.C. or Tallahassee, you're absolutely right. That's what the legislatures or senators say to us. They they want to see that we do have skin in the game, that we are putting something forward. So that's that's a great point. I just I just want to say that. So I I would then probably I will I will probably I will be a yes vote then on this because I think I don't want to kick the can down the road. I, I don't because I think this has been out there for a while and I think you know if we can get a study that isn't you know too expensive and that everybody would agree on I think we need to move forward deputy mayor Brown. and mr. mayor just for clarification I would you know even if, if we decide or if, if the decisions ever made to build an EOC uh, and, and move the police station I would if my position is I would be in favor of keeping the, the current property on Granada as a substation That's all. Absolutely. thank you all right, anyone else? Please call the vote. Commit. Seven H. I think we have a motion and second, don't we? Yeah, there's a motion yeah. and second to approve. So it would approve? Approve. To approve it. Right. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. No. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. Seven P. Disposition item titled Auto Renewal Yellowstone Athletic Fields Maintenance. So, move approval. Second. Thank you. Any, uh, I think it was Commissioner Sargent that pulled this one as well. Yes, sir. Just have some questions on this. Um, <clears throat> for these auto renewals, um, one of the residents got up and said how, how great the agenda was rewritten. I think we can do a little bit better. Um, and the reason why I say that is when I look at this, um, I look at the invitation to bid the initial work order, if you will, um, that was dated 2014, 2015. But it does, it's not very clear on what changes have taken place after all these auto renewals. And it just would be nice if, if on that front page, if we could see for the residents to see what has changed. For instance, you know, we have on here Osceola School. Well, we all know Osceola School is now has all portables out there. You know, it's probably not getting mowed like it maybe once was on the on the initial bid. Um, the, we had some changes to the South Nova Rec Center where we added a big building. We took out some grass area. Maybe the scope of work there changed. I just think it would be nice to be able to see maybe on that first page some changes, whatever's changed, make it a little bit easier for the residents, for us to, to see that. Um, and then on the other, um, it's just kind of a, st a statement, I don't need an answer. The other thing was Ms. Shanahan sent me the, pardon me, let me grab it here. The, um, the contract we have with Volusia County Schools to maintain the property at Warren Beach Middle School and um, Osceola Elementary School. And I'm just curious, you know, why are the residents of Orange Beach paying to maintain those fields when the residents pay Volusia County School Board and they have a budget of $1.4 billion? Um, I feel like we're, it's almost like a double tax. Like, why can't the school board maintain those fields like we need and um, let our residents use them after hours, after school hours? Just my thought. Um, just wanted to throw it out there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And now would be the appropriate time if anyone wishes to comment on any of the consent agenda items. Deputy Mayor Briley. As long as I said agenda, we've had a while. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to thank um, staff, uh, Sean Finley, on, on item I. Um, that would be the, the Fleming Avenue drainage improvements that we appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Good work. Good deal. Commissioner Tolland. I'd like to make a comment on uh, 7A and um, just kind of thank again Main Street for the job and the service they do for our city. Um, I'm going to use I it's I'm going to use this quote and it's so funny. 
I, I heard it again today from um, Becky when I was speaking with her, but they do really do a give us a big bang for the buck. And seventy thousand dollars subsidy is a decent amount, um, but they give us a lot more than what we're giving them. And I just want to thank them for what they do for the city, and and um, improving the, our quality of life. And let me see. I had a couple other comments. Um, do you want us to clap for that one? No, yeah, I'll clap. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We do appreciate you. We really do appreciate you all. Um, nope, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Good deal. In that case, we'll uh, start. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Sark. I'm sorry. On that same item, um, some things that we need to look at in the future, though, is the CRA sunsets in, what, 2030? 33, I think. 33. So, you know, I know that's a ways away, 10 years, but we need to be looking at, what is it? 37. 36. So we got a lot 36. of time to plan, but that's $70,000 that we're going to need to figure out 36. where we're going to pull that from. And in, in the future, I know it's a ways away, but just something to look at. But I agree with uh, Commissioner yeah. Tolland. <laughs> um, I do think we get a, a lot for that $70,000. And it's, but I think in that packet it said that you also have 3,500 plus total volunteer hours that comes yeah. along with that. So that's I think crazy. that's um, very impressive, and y'all do a great job. Thank you to everyone. Yeah. Good deal. Anyone else? All right, now we'll go to public hearings. I'll open the public hearings, and we'll start with 8A. Ordinance number 2023-56, an ordinance amending Chapter 1, General Administration Article 3, Definitions and Acronyms, Section 1-22, Definitions of Terms and Words, Amending Chapter 2, District and General Regulations, Article 1, Establishment of Zoning Districts and Official Zoning Map, Section 2-02, Future Land Use Map, Designations and Zoning Districts, Amending Chapter 2, District and General Regulations, Article 2, District Regulations, Section 2-07, Zoning District Designations, Repealing Chapter 2, District and General Regulations, Article 2, District Regulations, Section 2-33, I-2, Heavy Industrial Zoning District, Amending Chapter 2, District and General Regulations, Article 4, Conditional and Special Exception Regulations, Section 2-57, Criteria for Review of Specific Conditional and speci Special Exception of the City of Ormond Beach Land Development Code by repealing the I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, removing certain definitions and conditions for conditional and special exception uses related to the I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for severability and setting forth an effective date. <laughs> this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-56, read by title only. Thank you, and I'll ask Planning Director Steven Spraker to speak on this item. Good evening, Steven Spraker, Planning Director. This is a land development code amendment to delete the I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District. As the ordinance said, there's um, five sections of the land development code that would be amended, including like the definitions, the actual zoning district, and the conditional and uh, special exception uses. Uh, this was based on the City Commission direction to delete the Orm Beach I-2. There are no current properties with this I-2 zoning designation, so you're not you're not actually amending any um, actual properties they're zoning. Um, one of the concerns previously was Halifax Paving has been annexed. How will they be zoned? Uh, we met with Halifax Paving in October. Um, they will maintain their, their Volusia County I-2 zoning district until the city assigns a zoning district. Uh, we are going to do the planned industrial development it's a plan development. It'll come back before the planning board and commission. Be a public hearing. Everyone will get to take a look at the uses, and they are um, in agreement to do that. This land development code amendment doesn't uh, affect any property outside the jurisdiction of Warren Beach. It simply removes the framework of the I-2 heavy industrial zoning. Planning board recommended approval of the deletion of the I-2. Staff is available if there are any questions. Thank you, and I don't have any cards. City Manager Shanahan. If I just might add, um, the county has um, instituted a moratorium for I-2 zoning. Um, I heard today that they received a, a permit application from Belvedere. Uh, they did not accept that, and they told them that they would not be processing any applications 
on any I-2 zonings until they've been through that process. Thank you. Any other questions for Stephen? May I move approval? Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8B. Ordinance Summer 2023-57, an ordinance annexing three parcels of real property in the city of Ormond Beach, said property located along Benton Street, Volusia County parcel numbers 3136-01-34-01460, and 3136-01-0022, annexing two unnamed right of ways setting forth zoning privileges and obligations regarding the property redefining the territorial boundaries of the city of Ormond Beach to include the property redesignating the boundaries of zone one of the city of Ormond Beach to include the property providing for transmission providing for severability and setting forth an effective date this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-57 read by title only thank you and uh, I don't have any cards Move approval of ordinance number 2023-57. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Okay. Pretty straightforward. Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8C. Ordinance number 2023-58, an ordinance annexing two parcels of real property into the city of Ormond Beach said property located at 1113 North US Highway 1, Volusia County parcel numbers 4238-02-05-0040 and 1117 North US Highway 1, Volusia County parcel number 4238-02-05-0050, setting forth zoning privileges and obligations regarding the property, redefining the territorial boundaries of the city of Ormond Beach to include the property, redesignating the boundaries of zone one of the city of Ormond Beach to include the property, providing for transmission, providing for severability, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-58, read by title only. Thank you. I do not have any cards. Move approval. Second. We've been seconded. Any discussion or questions for Stephen? If not, please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And I will close the public hearings. We'll go to reports, suggestions, and requests, starting with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you heard from uh, an individual tonight about our um, traffic calming program and we have an issue with uh, traffic calming over on Beachside. Uh, we're trying to resolve those issues with those two um, groups of folks. Um, but it's been a while since we implemented that traffic calming um, program. So staff is going to take a look at that and uh, do a, a search of other jurisdictions to make sure that we're um, consistent in what others are doing, um, consistent in how items are counted for votes and, and not counted. Um, some jurisdictions require um, the residents to have some sort of um, skin in the game, if you will. Um, so we're trying to normalize that process a little bit. I'm sorry that you've been getting a couple of questions about that, but staff's working hard to resolve those, and we'll probably workshop something uh, with you in the early spring once we've been able to research um, where we're at and how we can improve that program so everybody feels heard. Um, also, uh, Brian asked me to notify you that uh, they are now accepting uh, applications for the next cohort of Fast Track. Fast Track is offered in a partnership with SCORE. It mentors um, individuals looking to start a business. It's a 10-week program. Uh, Ormond Beach provides the businesses and entrepreneurs with an opportunity to start up and grow their businesses in our city. The program runs from 9 a.m. to noon, from January 6th to March 9th. Um, their space is limited. Uh, we also uh, have a space available at City Hall so that Brian or a SCORE individuals can meet and discuss any issues that they have so that we can locally grow our businesses. 
As expected, December is a busy month for us. Um, coming up is um, uh, Movies on the Halifax on December 8th. Um, unaccompanied, unaccompanied Minors, I don't believe I've seen that one. The Home for the Holidays Parade on uh, December 9th. So right after uh, the movies the next day. Once Upon a Story Time at the Casements is December 12th. Holiday at the Casements concert is December 14th and Breakfast with Santa, the very popular Breakfast with Santa. So are we sold out yet, Robert? We're sold out. So um, uh, it's always, it's hard to get a seat there. We also have a mailbox over at the Casements to drop a letter to Santa. You're never too old to send Santa a letter. So just remember that. Uh, tell him what you want for Christmas. So um, the big event for us is the Home for the Holidays Parade. Um, we'll have a um, welcoming reception beforehand. Is that correct, Robert, like we do? Yes, welcoming reception before the parade like we normally do? Yes. So uh, we'll send you out all the details for that. Break out that ugly Christmas sweater and there'll be plenty of candy on, on the floats to toss to the, uh, the kids that are interested. Um, that's all I have unless you have some questions for me. Any questions for the city manager? Just can I, on those traffic calming, is there any way we can get something out to the residents so they know that we're working on it? Um, well, on we the, can put something on Facebook. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Deputy City Attorney Ann Margaret Emery. Thank you, Ann Martin. And tonight we start with Commissioner Sargent. As if I haven't said enough tonight. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, to staff for looking into those speed tables and traffic calming. Um, I know it's a big concern on Melrose, and um, look forward to getting that going. Um, Robert Carolyn, thank you for always answering my questions and helping me. Um, through this agenda on some of the items that you are um, champion. I really appreciate your knowledge and, and everything your staff does as well. Um, do we have an update or can we get an update on at the airport taxiway Bravo, the rehab status? Is that? So staff has not brought that back in yet. We're okay. still working um, on that item, so I don't have a, a date certain. For okay, that. that's fine. Thank you. Um, the last thing is as I drive down the road, I still see mulch. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say it, but it's just mulch all over Granada. As it rains, it just washes away. I, I would love to see if we can get that cleaned up. Um, and with that, I'll say goodnight. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner. Commissioner Persis. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, gosh, this is the busy time of the year. I think we all have events. I think the next two weeks, almost every night, it seems like there's something going on. Um, I, I had a great time today at Pine Trail Elementary attending the D.A.R.E. graduation, and Captain Roos and everyone that was involved with D.A.R.E. Uh, was just amazing. The kids are so excited, and, and they really do learn a lot of skills they take with them through their adult life. Um, so that was just wonderful. I just, Robert, I want to tell you what a great um, Veterans Day luncheon there it was at the Senior Center. It's always one of my favorite activities. It's just great. You all do a fabulous job. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I went yesterday to a first up shelter meeting. I represent the commission um, in, that, um, in that area. And there is going to be the Mayor's Gala uh, February 3rd, 2024. So mark your calendars for that. Um, Ms. Shanahan, I'm hope, I know last year we had a table. I hope we can get another table. I'm sure they'll be sending you something out about that. So that would be awesome. So we need to be supportive of that. They're really working hard. Um, the other thing that I would um, like to request um, to the commission and actually there are two things they're kind of related the first is um, I would like to ask you know city manager and staff to begin to begin looking for ways to get a grant for lighting our bridge all year long this is something that I hear over and over from citizens and residents it would just make our city I, I, I see it lit all year long with different colors for the seasons during Easter during Halloween Thanksgiving Christmas 
Valentine's Day. I think it's just something that could really make our bridge look spectacular and um, show how spectacular our city is. I just think it's something that we really need to do. Um, and also I think it would be a really great idea to paint parking spaces on Granada in different colors to make it look different. I've seen pictures of that. I see you, I see Orman over there, yes. But in so many cities they do that and it looks really, really nice. Um, you know, you could even, there's all kinds of ways you can do it, but that's something we can talk about. But I would um, ask, I would hope that the commission would agree with me. I'm sorry, where do you see that? Seen oh, that? other cities? Like, well, I, I guess I looked when, um, before Becky came, um, I was, yeah, when I was on Ormond Main Street, we would see, yeah, pictures of cities and, and like right in their downtown, they would have the parking spaces, different colors. And it just really adds life to the street. And um, we have a lot of livelihood going on in our streets and I think it would make it even look much more lively. So I think it would be great, but I would hope that the commission would agree and we could maybe move forward with this. Any comments? I'd like to see the, the lighting going. I, I think with that redoing the downtown that we're doing with the F dot and all, that might be a little premature to do some of the other um, enhancements, but I think the lighting is something we've talked about, I know, yeah. in our priorities so well, that's going to be, be that's going to be incorporated too we're doing that infrastructure we do Cass with and park. the Casson park as well so let's just keep that high on the priority list okay folks tomorrow so we'll be talking to them about that okay that'd be wonderful thank you all so much and i hope everybody has a great evening and be safe thank you deputy mayor briley thank you mr mayor um since our last meeting i was uh, fortunate enough back around um <clears throat> excuse me, Veterans Day to attend the Barracks of Hope ribbon cutting uh, in Daytona Beach and, and what a moving uh, tribute to our, our homeless veterans where now they have some place where they can go and, uh, and be housed. And, and one thing I might ask this commission, uh, Mr. May, if we can put it on a future agenda. Um, I did see that many of our sister cities, Port Orange, Daytona Beach, I think even Holly Hill, have sponsored rooms for Barracks of Hope, but Orange Beach was noticeably absent uh, for sponsoring rooms. So I mean, uh, they had their their city, you know, city seals next to the, the rooms, and I just didn't know if that was something. I think it was twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand, and there's tons of federal money. I mean, no vet should ever go homeless. There's Absolutely. tons and tons of federal money out there yeah. for that, but uh, yeah, I think it's just a matter of where they're getting their grant funds from they should not have a problem raising money at all yeah i just think it would be a, a great you know uh it, it'd just be a nice gesture by our city to, to sponsor them as well as with with our other volusia sister cities um the veterans day celebration at the war memorial art museum was just fantastic thank you to our staff and everyone who participates in that that was a fantastic event um I was able to attend the National League of Cities Summit in Atlanta, Georgia, where um, something interesting came up about that. Uh, one, of, one of the sessions I went to talked about, uh, well, they talked about many different things, but housing was one of them. And I was very interested in that because a lot of other communities are facing the same thing that we're facing with the Senate Bill 102 Live Local Act. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of interesting to hear perspectives from other folks from around the country uh, as to how they're dealing with that. Um, a lot of them, especially the state of Texas right now, has a bill going through that basically would strip most of the powers away from, from local governments. So if it's contrary to what the state wants. So I thought that was you know, a little bit troubling. Um, something else they discussed too that they're, they're dealing in other states is, is rent control. And of course, you know, our, our legislature, I think, earlier, well, actually part, as part of the Live Local Act, I believe, we uh, limit what people can do with rent control. Governments cannot step in and, and set you know, rents on, uh, limits on rent. So I thought that was uh, interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing, of course, everyone this weekend at the, at the Christmas parade. That'll be a, a great time. And do one quick question for Stephen. I was approached by a business owner who would like to annex into the city who was surrounded by the city. State Road 40, the Little Tomoki Yacht Club. They would like to come into the city, but I think they've 
they indicated they've talked to the city before about it, but it didn't really go very far. So they are interested in becoming part of the city of Warren Beach. Okay, I'll have her do that. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I'll say good night. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Commissioner Tolland. You always save the best for last, right? That's right. Okay. I have 10 minutes. So it's kind of almost the end of the year, so I wanted to get some updates. So I have talked with staff a few things, and um, there's a no particular order of my comments, so I apologize. Um, the speed bumps, I have had a lot of discussion with um, the city manager and staff re regarding that, and Sean, and I'm very happy that we're going to relook at that process and and see what we can do to help our citizens that have that fear that they have safety issues um, the only and, and i'm just going to say this publicly the comment that i um, am most concerned about on this whole process is how we calculate our percentage and we we do count as miss davis said we do count a no a non-vote in that calculation which makes it very hard to get that higher 65 percent of yes so you know for me if you make a non-vote that just means you don't really care which way it goes or you just don't want to deal with it so I, I don't think that should be in the total but i'm just i just needed to say that publicly um, but I appreciate the staff's going to relook at that and revisit it and look at our sister cities. Um, Casson Park, where are we at with that um, choice? Where are we? Where are we doing that? Uh, we sent that back to um, uh, Zev Cohen and Associates, and they're uh, incorporating your comments. Sean, can you tell us when we'll expect to hear from him and what when we'll bring that back to the commission? I. I had some correspondence with Dwight Durant this, this very morning. Mm -hmm. um, we're setting up a meeting to go over where we're at and, and, and help develop our, our time frame for the rest of the project. They're right now working on those um, detailed engineering plans. They've taken the concept. A lot of times when you do a concept plan, you're a little bit freer, you're a little bit more artistic. Now's the time where they're really putting the, you know, the rubber to the road to make sure that all the, all the dimensions work out. And, and so this is the, the, this first 60% plans that they're working on is really the bulk of the, of the work of making sure that dimensionally, G, geometrically it works and so they're working on that right now I'm expecting to have something after from them right after the first of the year for a first take a look at okay. and then we'll get through um, there so hopefully we're ready to put it out to bid in the spring okay know, late spring early summer probably great thank you um, the grow the loop entrance I was asked to we were asked to go to uh, the quality of life board and it was approved unanimously unanimously there so now I'm just kind of curious as what is our next step in how we can make that a reality. Talking about that internally, and um, we're looking at some ideas, and we'll have to um, determine. You know, we're looking at uh, North Beach Street as being the entrance. Uh, they have some ideas, but we'll have to workshop that and bring that back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I did also speak with Sean about um, in the beginning of last spring we talked about the mental wellness in the fitness trails and I had asked Sean for an update on that and if you would just share that with the rest of the Commission that would be great I'm just trying to close up some things that we started we, we had gone through this was a little bit of a tricky one for us because it's a little bit out of our wheelhouse trying to find the right message to put so we we had um, again we, we have a technical group that meets every Tuesday morning and so one of the things that we've done in there is brainstorm those ideas and we had some some pretty good ideas I think I, gave, I sent those to you you did they and, look and great and hopefully those were simple enough and hopefully they conveyed the message Powerful. and one of the thoughts that we have we're trying to figure out how to how to get that message across right now one of the thoughts we had was and it kind of came to me when we were in Orlando when I was in Orlando they had street names um, in pay in letters in the papers and to put those as, as you're walking on, on the on the path um, serve twofold purposes give that message to everybody but also one of the things that we hear with our sidewalks and with our trails and with our paths is people want to know how far how, how far they've went and so to use it kind of a double duty like the old mall walker signs you've gone a quarter of a mile you've gone a half a mile and and you know some of the thoughts we had were just very simple um you know not very complicated not very but giving people a little bit of emotional health and 
some right. some some good feelings. So yeah, that's yeah. where we're. I'm, I sent them. If you give me a second, I can bring them up. And then when we come down to the point where we're we're using um, funds for this, we can partner with Advent, which they've agreed to partner with us. The the, the five that we kind of that we have right now are. You know, the first one would be just a simple statement, breathe, reflect, grow. Uh, number two, embrace your journey. Three, find your strength from within. Four, courage to change. And five, peace in nature. And it just, you know, some, simp some very simple thoughts that really don't, you know, hopefully aren't, aren't offensive to anyone, but give everybody a little bit of um, inspiration to, to maybe hopefully figure out what, you know, see what the next message is. Okay. And get, and get, follow your path. All right, Sean, thank you. And I know that that puts you out of your comfort level, so, I, <laughs> so you can go slip on your yoga pants when you get home. <laughs> but now having read them, I feel so much more. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm almost done, guys. I'm sorry. So, uh, you know, the other question I had, and I was hoping we would get this done in this year, but I'm learning things take a lot longer than I ever thought. Um, is the land code with the plants and the native plants and the trees. I had to say that word. So um, I was thinking it was going to be on this agenda. It wasn't. I'm hoping that maybe we can get a report from Stephen um, on the December 19th agenda. Just an update and where we are with the ordinances. And or is that a Sean thing? Sorry, Sean. Again, this is this breathe, is one, breathe, relax, report, grow. Um, one of the things, you know, this is one of those ones that, that's 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 a little bit um, a little bit more in depth than, we, than I think that when we first talked about it, we want to make it take a good run. One of the things that we noticed as we were looking at this, that a lot of the landscape ordinances around the, the county and around the state were established in the in 1990s, and, and so so we're 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 about 30 years in, and, and everybody has the same ones. And, and so we realize it's, it's definitely a time to take a look at those. One of the things that we've discussed is looking at the possibility of, of getting someone from outside to take a look and, and to really evaluate whether we're doing the right things and what we can do to do it better. Okay. Um, so, so that's that's one of the- So don't give you the December 19th deadline. Gotcha. I, I think we'd rather get it right than- okay. And we can probably address the mulch at that point too. I think that's one of the definite things. Oh. <laughs> Um, okay, um, I'm almost done. Inve okay, this is under investigation requests. So I was reading in the planning board comments from Mr. Jorzak that he was asking about cell service improvements at the industrial park. So I'm just throwing that out there that that is a need. I don't know. If so, in in his comments in the is planning board, is it for board, fuel? Is that what you're talking about? He's, he talked about the lack of cell service up Airport Road. Oh, cell service! I thought you cell. said self service. Oh, not self service. Oh, we could do self service too, but cell service, and maybe. So we have looked at that a couple of years ago, maybe four or five now. We had someone that was interested in installing a tower at the airport. Um, but that uh, fell through. Uh, they never, uh, I think it was C3 Communications. Does that ring a bell? Next Tower. So um, we can, that's a private enterprise. It's not something that we do. We, we it kind of grows organically from the need. So. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Comments for me are um, that needs analysis. Um, I voted yes because we are going to need a needs analysis um, sooner, the late, sooner than later, and that's why I kind of changed my, my mind on, and I voted for yes. And I would, you know, because we do need to look at whether we need um, a command center or not, and whether that's related to the police station moving or not. I'm not sure. I don't have a a real strong feeling about it until this analysis comes in um, and I want to assure Rebecca that she when she comes and talks about Belvedere all the time that we aren't forgetting about Belvedere it's not something we talk about all the time because there is just work being done and there's things that we just need to just you know our time it, it just takes times but I just want to assure all the residents 
and I know Rebecca spoke on that, that, that you know, we are not, as a city, forgetting um, the importance of fighting that project. And last but not least, um, I just want to send a heartfelt sympathy to the Bacasa family and all their friends and um, relatives and all of those that are affected um, by the death of, of our police officer and just want to let them know that um, my prayers and thoughts are with them. Great. And uh, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Yep. Oh, <laughs> so forth.